Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain all of the main 3D printing technologies. Specifically, I'm going to show you material extrusion, VAT photopolymerization, material jetting, binder jetting, powder bed fusion, and sheet lamination. In aggregate, these are six of the seven process categories for additive manufacturing identified by the American Society for Testing in Materials in 2012 and now encapsulated in the standard ISO ASTM 52900 2015. This actually lists seven 3D printing processes, the last of which is directed energy deposition or DED. However, unfortunately for us, DED is a very high-end industrial process that I've never managed to capture on camera. But I have filmed all of the other 3D printing technologies, so let's go and take a closer look. The most widespread form of 3D printing is material extrusion. Most commonly, this delivers a strand of thermoplastic filament to a print head where it is heated and extruded onto a build platform which lowers after each layer has been completed. Material extrusion 3D printers come in many sizes, starting with small models like this one from Monoprice. A great many larger desktop printers from companies including Ultimaker, MakerBot and Zortrax. And then much bigger floor standing machines from industry giants such as Strasysys. The largest material extrusion 3D printer that I've ever seen is the Big Rep 1, here on display at the 2015 3D print show. The build volume of this amazing printer is over one cubic meter, so allowing the output of very large objects indeed. The material extrusion 3D printing process was invented by Scott Crump in 1988, who went on to form Stratasys. Crump named his 3D printing method Fused Deposition Modelling, or FDM. Still today, many people refer to material extrusion by this name alone. However, Stratasys owns the FDM trademark and remains the only company that can legally sell an FDM 3D printer. In addition to making plastic objects, some material extrusion 3D printers can build things from a composite of a thermoplastic combined with another material. Today, composite filaments include thermoplastics mixed with wood, various metals or carbon fibre. Objects printed in a thermoplastic and carbon fibre composite can also be very strong indeed, with several companies now making dedicated 3D printers to produce carbon fibre reinforced plastic parts. At the other end of the spectrum, material extrusion can 3D print foods that include chocolate, cheese, ice cream and cookie doughs. My favourite food printer is the food form from Robots in Gastronomy, here printing directly onto a chilled anti-griddle at the 2014 3D print show. Similarly fascinating to watch are 3D printers that extrude concrete, clay or other building materials. Here we're watching a big Delta 3D printer from the World Advanced Savings Project or WASP which is outputting a clay model about one metre in size. However, a larger Big Delta has 3D printed a building 12 metres in diameter, and there are other printers that have extruded concrete buildings far larger than that. Whilst material extrusion remains the most common form of 3D printing, the first technology was VAT photopolymerization. This was invented by Charles Hull in 1983 and uses a light source to solidify successive object layers on the surface or base of a vat of liquid photopolymer. Often the light source is a laser that scans the outline of each layer. However, it's also possible to use a DLP projector to solidify entire object layers in one exposure. VAT photopolymerization printers again come in a wide range of sizes, from machines that may prototype very large parts, to smaller desktop models that are frequently used to make casting masters for jewellery, dental appliances and other intricate items. VAT photopolymerization 3D printers from Form Labs have also been used to manufacture part of the sole of this running shoe, 
which is a New Balance 990 Sport. 3D printing via that photopolymerization is far more expensive than using material extrusion due to the high cost of photocurable resins. However, as we can clearly see, the surface quality of the final prints is far superior, so allowing the parts to have a wide range of industrial applications. A related 3D printing process is material jetting, which again forms object layers from photocurable resins. But here the resins are sprayed from a moving print head, which sets them solid with UV light. This removes the need for a vat and also allows objects to be built from multiple materials. As with vat photopolymerization, material jetting resolution and surface quality are excellent, and some printers can even output objects in full colour. These include the Stratasys J750, which is one of my favourite ever 3D printers and produces amazing multicolour prints like this, and this, and also this. Back in 2018, a company called Mimaki also launched a material jetting printer called the 3D UJ553, which is similarly capable of 3D printing exceptional quality colour objects such as this, and this, and then this. Sadly today, colour material jetting remains a very high-end industrial technology but maybe one day it will become available to consumers via online bureaus or even domestic desktop hardware. Moving on, we come to technologies that build objects from powders. The first of these is binder jetting, which sprays a binder or glue onto successive powder layers. The process typically involves a powder reservoir being raised with a thin layer of powder spread across the build area by a roller or blade. A print head then sprays on a binder where required and the process repeats. Most commonly, as we can see here, binder jetting builds objects from a gypsum powder that is sprayed with a glue and sometimes also coloured inks to produce lower cost and usually rather fragile colour objects. For a brief period, Industry leaders 3D systems also sold colour jet printing binder jetting hardware that could create full colour plastic objects such as these very impressive prototypes. While this particular form of binder jetting has sadly disappeared from the market, it is increasingly common to use of a technology to 3D print sand moulds and cores that are then used to cast final metal parts. It's also possible to use binder jetting to directly manufacture metal parts by spraying a binder onto a metal powder with the resultant object then cured in an oven and then infused with more metal to produce a final object that's about 99.9% .9 solid. A second technology that uses a roller or blade to scrape a layer of powder across a print bed is powder bed fusion. Here, powder granules are fused together with heat with each object layer outlined by a laser or electron beam. This allows very high quality plastic or metal objects to be produced, with large powder bed fusion 3D printers now increasingly used to make parts for aeroplanes as well as custom medical devices. The quality of the output from direct metal powder bed fusion really is now very impressive indeed and is opening up all kinds of new manufacturing possibilities. As we can see here, back in 2014, I managed to photograph powder bed fusion in action when a company called Realizer brought their SLM50 to the TCT show. The SLM50 was the world's first desktop hardware for 3D printing in metal and uses a laser to selectively melt together the particles of a metal powder where required. Once one layer is finished, the print bed lowers and a recoater arm sweeps more powder into place so that the process can begin again. And, as we can see, it does so twice just to make sure everything is just so. I will always remain grateful to Realizer for allowing me to get this shot, as it really is what high-end industrial 3D printing is all about.
Our last technology is sheet lamination, which can produce impressive prints like this by sticking together sheets of cut paper. Here specifically, we're looking at the output from MCOR Iris 3D printers that spray coloured inks onto paper layers and which allow the output of relatively low cost colour prototypes and 3D models. On many occasions, I have tried to film the MCOR sheet lamination process, but have never managed to overcome the reflection and focus challenges involved and get really satisfactory results. But hopefully, what we're seeing here gives you some insight into sheet lamination in action. And regardless, any 3D printing process that can turn sheets of paper into a bowl of fruit has to be rather cool. And yes, both the bowl and the fruit inside it are all 3D printed out of paper. Over the past eight years, I've taken a camera to lots of different 3D printing trade shows, which has resulted in an archive of thousands of shots of 3D printers, which I've drawn from in making this video. Sadly, in 2020, due to the state of the world, I can't bring you a new 3D printing trade show report. But even in these bleak times, 3D printing does continue to progress and to be used to do amazing things. Not least, many 3D printing companies have been using 3D printers to make PPE. For example, here in the UK, Photocentric is 3D printing over 7 million face shields for the NHS. And it's therefore possible we will look back at 2020 as the year in which the mass local manufacture of things using 3D printing finally came of age. If you want to know more about 3D printing, you might want to look in my book, 3D Printing 3rd Edition, which I've used to supply some of the diagrams we've looked at in this video. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.